Welcome to Westside Community Church. This is Chris Botts training our teams in leadership. Is, you know, in the inner circle, say, of Christianity and knows all the insider terms. Number four, we need to seek to make outsiders become insiders. And if we have this attitude, then we will always want everybody to get what we know and love about being a Christian. And then number five, we want to make the first visit set up for that second visit. And there's that specific uh, statistic I was looking for. It's actually, there's a 16% chance of a first-time visitor coming back. It's not 20. But when they come back that second time, it's setting it up for an 85% chance for a third, a third visit. Anybody have any thoughts on that? Boy, you guys are really getting charged up on this, huh? This is the downside of having you. On, on Saturday, I got to speak to the worship and, and tech teams. I got to speak at 9 and at 3, the two worst times you ever want to speak to a group outside of 6.30 when they'd rather be at home watching TV. But let me know some thoughts. Let's have some dialogue if we can. Before we get to this SWOT analysis, what are your thoughts on that? So Jeff's saying if we can make that 16% higher for that second return visit, right, then the 85% goes up and the numbers are bigger no matter what. Good point. You guys think we do a pretty good job of being in a, an inviting church? Yeah, I think so. I have been here about four years, so I've been here a little bit more than six months. And I've been at churches from 1,500 to six, 8,000. And... We do a really good job west side. I think you guys all need to pat yourselves on the back there. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. It's easy, right? Jesus, we're just being who we are. Sophia? Okay. Okay. Sophia says she's struggling with the terms I'm using, guest versus visitor. And you could use stranger. You could use guest and stranger if you really wanted to make them polar opposites. But more than the terminology, I'm really trying to get you to the feeling I mean, if I'm going to come to your house and I'm going to be your guest, I feel a lot more special than I do as a visitor because I can visit you any time, but I'm really not being your guest. Because if, I think, if you think about it, here, this may help a little bit. You're expecting me as a guest, right? So I know I'm going to show up, and there's certain expectations as a guest that we have when we visit someone, not that they're, we're expecting to have be lavished with gifts, but that's fine too if I come to your house, just as a side. But <clears throat> a guest is being expected, right? But if I come to visit you, it's more my action to you. You know, I, I'm coming to, you, to your house. You're not expecting me. I don't know what, I don't even know if it's a good time to come. And that's the last thing we want on a Sunday, right? We don't ever want anybody to come in and feel like this is a bad time for you to come knocking on the church doors. So, does that help a little bit more in terms of getting the, the visitor-guest dynamic in there? You know, a guest is going to come in and see a clean bathroom, smiling faces, people well-dressed. I mean, the, the stepping up and the, the dress code that you guys are doing with security and ushers, um, I'm not going to worry about you guys in the parking lot because I thank the Lord for you all <laughs> being dressed up like that on a Sunday morning. But your dress code's cool, too. You're going to have some nice... I don't know, maybe you have, have some nice vest coming or something. But there's, you know, there's an importance in how we look and how we're, ex that we're expecting someone to be here. The bathrooms are clean. There's, you know, we'd love to, to continue to 
develop an attitude where there's trash on the floor, and I think this happens a lot for those of us that call West Side home. We're, we're going to pick up the trash. We're not going to say, hey, can you get that, Daryl? I mean, we're going to just pick it up because it's home, right? Feels like home, exactly. Yeah, Richard. So the environment we create. And I think the environment gets back to that per those percentages, not to get into numbers too much. But you think about it. You come and you have a great experience, right, anywhere. You always wonder if that experience gonna be, is going to be replicated the second time you go there, right? It's the Disney brand. I mean, I know any time I go to Disney, and I've got other issues I see therapists on about Disney, but, you know, there's, there's a pretty common expectation of an experience I'm going to get. And I, I think you're right. I think we do a great job here of that consistent expectation uh, of an experience that you get at Westside. Mm -hmm. Great point. So don't forget the regulars, right? When you guys, you know, how many people have been at a couple different churches in their, in their church life? More than one? Okay. So have you ever been at a church for a while and you walk in and it's, it's no fault of any specific individual, but the greeter's trying to be really nice and they greet you and you've been going there for two, three years and they make, and you feel like you're, hey, welcome, glad you came today. It's almost like that visitor experience, right? But you really want to be feeling like a guest when you walk in too. So that's a great point. Even the person that's been here 10 years, you still want to walk in and feel valued as a guest. Every time I walk into Disney, as, much as, as tight as I hold onto my pocketbook, they, they want to create that same experience, so I want to give them my money, right? Which, that's a whole other aside in the church, but any other thoughts? <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So everybody hear that? The discussion of the, the fact that you come and then, you know, originally when you come visit, say, my house, you're, you're served, but then you serve yourself, you're, your family. You become part of the family. It doesn't hurt to occasionally still be served, and that happens, too. That's the cool thing about West Side, right? You, you'll still end up being served, even though you may be serving yourself because you've been here for a while. Well, let's take this as a good time to break. Um, we're going to pass out some some documents called a SWOT analysis. <clears throat> Look at this. Give you a little background while we're passing this out. You guys are great. Thank you for your help. The SWOT analysis is an evaluation tool that organizations use, both for-profit, non-profit business units within a corporation use it. We're using it now some. Uh, I've taken it to a couple different ministry units to try to evaluate ourselves in terms of our strengths, our weaknesses, our opportunities, and our threats to the ministry. Now, this is a larger group than we've done it in before. Usually, and, and you may want to have further discussions in your breakouts, but this gives us an opportunity to take the temperature of the ministry. Now, having said that, I have to ask that 
while I want to have, I want to have a very frank dialogue, I want everybody to feel free and comfortable to be transparent. Lyle's got thick skin. Um, it's important for us to have that transparency. Because if we don't, then the, this tool is only as good as the feedback that you guys give us. Yeah, I was not instructed on pen duty, so I apologize, Sharon. We do need some pens unless, does, it, does anybody have some? Lyle may have some in back. So some of what we've talked about right now, we've already filled out that strengths box. If you guys look up here, you've got the ministry analysis of, of what we're looking at here. We've got the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunity, and the threats. And so we start with the strengths. It's good to talk about the positive first. We've really hit a lot of the positive, right? I mean, I think you can always put feels like home for West Side in the strengths box, right? And everything that goes along. I think we do a, a good job of developing um, a guest mentality. But I'm, there's a, as a leader, or as leaders, we need to all remember that there's a lot of danger in sitting back and thinking, well, we've got this. This is, we're all good. Because with that attitude becomes, uh, over time, it becomes a mediocrity of service. And we don't want that, right? So we need to constantly be working on our own personal leadership, constantly reinventing ourselves, constantly developing so that our strengths don't ever become stagnant. Does anybody, because we're going to talk about strengths first, does anybody have any other strengths? Don't worry, Tracy, I'm not going to fall, but if I do, catch me. Yeah, thanks, Ken. Anybody have any other strengths? What's that? The message that John, yeah, that Pastor John shares? And Lyle, Rick, whoever's there. <laughs> Rick, Lyle, you just got left out. Sorry, Tony. The worship music. Very good, yeah. Let's, let's focus in a little bit. I'd like to focus in a little bit more on teams specifically. How many parking lot folks do we have here? There we go, the backbone of, or the icicle of the ministry. <laughs> let's talk about it from parking lot real quickly. What are some of the strengths of the parking lot teams? Friendly? They're always smiling. Yeah. So safety, another huge strength, right? There's safety. The high vis. Doug's bringing up the high visibility. Do you guys hear that? That's great. Jeff's right. When you pull in, you're parked. And then that person stays with you while they're still, it, it's not like the whole parking uh, mechanism stops. There's still individuals being parked. There's always a nice hello. I was out there today driving in circles tonight because no one was there to park me. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> Should have been here early. Yeah, that's right. I'll call ahead, right? Call ahead parking. I like that idea. Anybody else on parking? Sorry, go ahead. You know, I'm standing back at the ministry booth last Sunday for small groups. I'm praying for y'all because it's freezing cold back where I am. So, okay, let's go through strengths of greeters. How do we do as greeters? Let's, greeters teams, let's, let's hear some feedback there. Friendly? Smiling? What's that? Welcoming? That's great. I, I have a confession for you guys. I'm a recovering lawyer. Don't hold that against me. But one of the first things I learned years ago as a young lawyer, I know I look so young still, but um, was that it was better that I didn't know the answer and wasn't afraid, to, but, but wasn't afraid to say so and go get the answer than to make up some BS and then I'd be wrong. 
it's kind of hard when someone's paying you a high hourly rate to go, oh yeah, it's this, and then go back, well, I was kind of wrong, but it's better to say, I don't know, but I'll go find out. And that's, you're exactly right. That's our Welcome Center is great at that. There's a nice tag team between Welcome Center and, and greeters on that. Doors open, no matter how cold even, right? Yeah. I mean, we do a great job on Sunday mornings affecting global warming. <laughs> because there's, I just hear the ching, ching, ching as the doors open, but it's worth it, isn't it? Yeah, it's worth every minute of it. It's not climate change. <laughs> Anything else? I mean, we've always got information. Greeters have information. How about when we get inside to the ushers? Strengths of ushers, other than a good-looking crew of guys and gals, too. Are there there's some ladies on the See, Even better. They balance us out. So we've got a good good knowledge of the church flow <clears throat> set up. That's a great point, yeah. So for the medical response team, right? Yeah. Huge for you guys, I'm sure, yeah. I mean, they're really your lifeline. Yes. So their even facial awareness, knowing, I mean, their knowledge of individuals is, is really key, but also very good, right? Efficiency. Especially sometimes it's tough, right, getting people to move to the center and trying to find a place for a family. Good stuff. How about security? And I'll throw medical response in there too, kind of strengths of security. Other than we got a lot of big boys, look like they can handle themselves. The, I don't. I will not call a girl a big girl. <laughs> I will. There's a few things that I'm smart on, and that's one of them. I, I happily married 16 and a half years. Exactly. I won't say that I didn't learn the hard way, but <laughs> exactly. Able-bodied, confident, competent women too. Lau, can I, can I make a request? Could, you, could my personal one be 007? Would that work all right? 
<laughs> I love it. Thank you. That's why I love to work here, because you get paid to get made fun of. You don't need enemies when you have friends like that. <laughs> Great point. So the strengths of those two teams are really the fact that we don't have to use them, but competently trained, I think, too. I mean, I know there's been a lot of training involved, especially with those two teams, and s some more training even going forward, because those are two teams that you want to be, you need to be on your A game. I mean, God forbid we have to, to have an emergency that, that develops. Everybody hear that? Very professional when they needed her. They, were, they, they knew what they needed, and they were, it was probably a lot of what goes on in professional medical training. Yeah, they're there when you need them. Any other team that I'm missing? The most, yeah, hospitality. I didn't know every team that's here, so I apologize here. Hospitality, very important. I think hospitality... We talk about the guest, the guest idea, hospitality, welcome center. Um, the biggest Achilles heel for, for the welcome center is many times us. And I, just point myself at, I point at myself there because I don't educate you guys as well as I should on, on some questions you may get concerning my ministries. So I apologize up front. Don't throw things at me. Someone had a question. So strengths of hospitality and welcome center, we'll put those two together because they're really, they're very similar in their effect on guests. They're just located in different parts of the building. <laughs> how about feeding, yeah, how about feeding information and feeding faces? <laughs> That'd be separate. That'd be like Leanne's group and Cindy and all those, yeah. Hospitality, welcome center, more strengths. When they are edu when the, when we do a good job of educating and filling out the paperwork we're supposed to, it's pretty it's pretty slick, isn't it? The food is pretty darn good. I'd be happy to start taking home doggy bags. <laughs> See, all you gotta do is ask. <laughs> Six months doesn't get me that. I know. <laughs> yeah. How about weaknesses? Let's go to weaknesses. Tough to sometimes talk about, but m arguably really some of the most important stuff because when we talk about weaknesses, that's our growth area, right? And many times we're taught that's a negative and we shouldn't look at that, but in, in a corporate sense, in a leadership development sense, it's a, it's a positive thing because if we look at it, we can't do anything. I mean, we could get worse, but we should get better in that weakness. In the weaknesses, I will tell you, we will also find a lot of opportunities. So a weakness can many times also be an opportunity, right? So let's go through, uh, I wanna make sure we hit some threats too, but let's try to combine, in the interest of time, we'll try to combine weaknesses and opportunities at the same time. Let's start again. Go. Mm-hmm. Nice. Wait, wait a minute, guys. I, do you hear the bus coming? Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> well, sounds like something we need to talk offline with Pastor Lyle about. <laughs> Weakness is space. Great opportunity for the new building, right? <laughs> but I think you're, some of that is, you're right, we're, we're just, yeah. 
Everybody hear that? It was moved that way so we could have more seats in the back area because we are in a seating crunch, especially second service. Brian first and we'll come. Good point. A lot of people are talking. Yeah. Well, and again, something we can help out with, right? Because we have the ability to go up and say, hey, guys, love that you're hanging out. Love that you're here after service. Can you move over a little bit so we can get some people in? I mean, it can be done really nicely. If not, if you have a problem with that, see Lyle for more training. And then we'll go over here and then over here. So maybe a weakness here is that the, uh, one of the downsides of the food is that it, it really takes a toll on our seats and a great opportunity for better cleaning. And the carpets, yeah. Everybody hear that? And the op- there's an opportunity in a new building to not serve food where there, or to serve food where there's not carpet. So a weakness but an opportunity here is to make sure that we, there's a better flow of information to you all at the Welcome Center, and then you're better equipped. Because you're only equipped as good as, or you're only as good as you are equipped, right? Say more on that. Communication, you mean visual, every, okay, between the teams. Is there anything specific? Just making sure that there is communication between the teams. Okay. Mr. Coleman is pointing at you. (laughs) Who's next? You guys communicating. And then we'll come up here. Everybody hear that? Volunteers, if we could all park in the back so that, I know it's a little longer walk, but so that those spaces can be. I'd love to, work, you know, there's still so much design going on for the new building, but I'd love to see um, the church that we attend when we're back home in Indianapolis has two rows of guest parking, and, and there's signs there that say guest parking, or they have some pregnancy reference. Either way, I feel guilty if I park there. Maybe not so much with the pregnancy, but <clears throat> depends on how much I eat. Because <laughs> I lie whenever my mouth's moving. Doug. So weakness in the past is training, but now you have the opportunity of butts. <laughs> Sorry, I make fun of myself anytime I can. <laughs> Anybody else? Larry, did somebody else have a quick comment? We are going to do more of this. We're going to actually, we're not going, we weren't going to keep you here for another five hours, but there's, I do a, some work with individuals and help them in life plan and calling, and there's a cool tool that we've used at the Elder Board, and we've used it for about two years with staff. It's called Thinking Wavelength. We're going to post, Lyle and I were talking about this today, and he had a great idea. We're just going to film me taking you through this uh, evaluation on how you think, whether you're strategic or operational. 
you know, administrative, how you think. And so it'll help you guys working with each other. You know, you may be like, oh, he frustrates me so much or she frustrates me so much. But then you realize, oh, I'm an administrative individual on that end of the spectrum. I love details. And they're a visionary and a strategy guy or gal. So that's why if I better, that's why they may frustrate me. If I better understand that, then I know better how to work together. So a guy like me, I'm a nine. I love to visioneer, but even some of the gals were nice enough to tell me in the office today that sometimes that's my Achilles heel, which is true, because the admin stuff is where I fail if I don't have good admin support. So this sort of stuff helps you guys when you're in teams working together. Just an aside that we're going to have some of that, to get to your point, Doug, we're going to have some of that more consistent training for you all. Anybody else? Weakness opportunity? Everybody hear that? Yeah, it's key. Names are something I'm, I have a tough time with too. You know, so I, but I do value what you're saying. I mean, the value of remembering someone's face and name and putting that together makes a huge, I mean, talk about a good feeling as a guest. Then you're really feeling like family, right? And maybe in our West Side family, we can say that there's another level that you move to. I, I'm just thinking as I'm standing up here talking, you move from that guest to that family like we were talking about. I mean, it really is another level, but it doesn't mean you still don't want to be loved on, right? And so it matters when we know people's names. All the attendees had their own name tag. Yeah, I've been there. That sort of. Well, I, you know, I don't know fully how. I'm not part of the check-in process going forward with the kids. But as we're working on doing more of an online, tech, use, leveraging technology for that sort of thing, checking in our kids, there may be a way to be able to. I always, like I said, I have challenges with names. I always can, I love to cheat. These name tags that you guys have on are great. Because I can cheat, you know. There's only one of me, though. You can remember my name. Yeah. <laughs> but the kids have their names on the name tags, right? So it's easy to even call the kids out by name. How about... We're getting close to uh, the original hour. You want to kind of keep to that 7.30 goal? Okay. Let's talk about threats. What are the, the immediate threats that come to mind that you guys see in the different ministries? And I, and I think, yeah. Yeah. Small groups are the only way I've ever seen that, whether it's 1,500 or 8,000 ever. You know, if you've ever been to some of the huge mega churches like Willow Creek and some of these that are just blow your mind off, I walk around there and I think you have got to have small groups, and they do, very healthy communities, or that church blow you away. It's like going to a, another village for church every, every Sunday. So small groups are part of that, and they are, they're key to that, that community and, and making sure that we're living life on life. You're right. Uh, and I'll give a little plug that we always can use more leaders for small groups because we're getting into a place as we get ready to launch that we're, we can even now start needing more leaders. So it's a good thing to have people see that they value that. But it has to be authentic. Just like when we greet somebody coming in, on a Sunday, if it's not authentic, people can tell that. The you know their their uh, 
BS meter goes off. So. Yeah, I think you, that is a, a plus, but it's a threat because we could sit around and say, oh, we're doing a good job of that, right? I don't think, I'm a firm believer, I tell my wife this, and she thinks I'm crazy, I don't think you can tell an individual you love them too much. Because the last time, the, the last thing you want to have happen is to not say someone to someone you loved them, and then, God forbid, something terrible happens, or, and that person that's coming in from the parking lot on Sunday, we can't tell them that we, or show them that we love them enough because we don't know what kind of week they had or Sunday morning they had. So we have to make sure you're right. I think it's a threat potentially because we have to make sure we're always on our A game for that. We've always got to be loving on people. Larry. Yeah, and again, it goes back to a big, busy Sunday, right? That's our day. We're all on. And so we've got to have good communication within teams, across ministries, or our effectiveness and our efficiency, they, do, they just go down. They, they can't sustain themselves and, and climb, and we can't become better if our communication isn't good. So you're right. That's a constant, good constant reminder on the different teams, with, you know, different teams within the team's ministry. Remember about the importance of communication. Let's try to make sure that there is communication that's clear, right? So one person's not giving direction here and another there. I don't know specifically the, the situation, but you're right. It's, we've also got to realize we're, that we're operating. We've got to make sure we're operating within our sphere of influence, so to speak, for that day and what, we're, what our job is. Too many chiefs, not enough Indians. Okay. This is great because this is something that maybe, Lyle, we just need to have some further conversations so we make sure the, the, the communication is directly linear, lineal as opposed to fragmented some. So I appreciate that feedback. <clears throat> Any other thoughts at all? Yeah.
Everybody hear that? The impact you can have on just one person and really focusing in, being present with that individual, getting to know their name, talking to them, engaging with them, and then worrying about or thinking about moving on to the next individual so that each individual builds on a good, solid interaction is important. Can we keep going live? We good? Two more? Okay. We'll go here and then Jamie will go. The five minutes of craziness right before. There's two options, shock therapy or possibly monetary incentive to get here earlier. Rebates, whatever we have to do. Yeah. Jamie, did everybody hear that? When you find a young mom walking with a couple diaper bags and kids and, uh, or we don't have a plethora of handicapped spots, uh, making sure we always look for those opportunities to help. I know that it's tough sometimes to get individuals to jump onto the carts, but leveraging and using the carts is important too. That's a good idea. Use some. Let me leave you guys with one thought. It comes from Colossians chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. And it says, Live wisely among those who are not Christians and make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be gracious and effective so that you will have the right answer for everyone. So as I leave you guys, I appreciate the time we had tonight. Think about that. Meditate on that. Remember, the three points from verses 5 and 6, be wise, take notice of behavior, and don't miss that opportunity to really make that guest feel loved on. Thanks, guys.